All right, today I'm going to talk about the uh, Cisco Access Point 541N. This was uh, something I started installing in some of my clients, but I, I didn't install many of these in. And the main reason is because uh, not because they weren't functional or had problems uh, with wireless, but just because they were so big and ugly and just they didn't look great and it was a hassle to mount and wherever I put them it was just it, it didn't look right um, I guess that big ugly this is the kind of stuff uh, these kinds of antennas that you expect to see in um, home type of access points not small business or enterprise so they kind of stuck out so I wasn't ha very happy with them I eventually uh, switched to other models uh, so I moved into things like this uh, a little smaller with the earlier versions but uh, you know this is the average type of access point I'm installing now uh, this is the uh, the latest from Cisco so this is the uh, for small business uh, this is the 575 five seven one so uh, I did another video on this you want you might want to take a look at that but uh, so far this is the latest uh, I mentioned that the uh, Cisco doesn't have as many LED indicators it's just one one LED now and the finish isn't as good but uh, you can find all that information in the other video in this video we're gonna crack this open and see uh, what's inside uh, uh, so I, I I no longer use these and uh, I have a whole bunch of these left over. I, I really don't want to install used equipment anywhere so that's that's the reason and I'm just basically uh, don't want to put these things up on eBay or anything like that. But here's the uh, AC adapter that it, it came with and you can power these with the, either uh, a PoE switch or um, PoE injector. So I'm just going to plug this in just to show that it actually does work. So you should be able to see the LE indicators. Now the good thing about this, uh, there's LED indicators for the uh, different uh, frequencies that it uses so you can see which one I'm not sure now I, I think I said before that it might be able to use both but now I'm having doubts I think you may only be able to use either the 5G or the 2.4 um, frequency at one time not at the same time I'll, I'll have to check that out but I think that may be a limitation so the uh, the other good thing about this uh, reset uh, paper clip uh, reset uh, button there and the antennas are not permanent like some of the cheap uh, uh, household uh, consumer access points and routers so these easily come off and these are actually a pretty good size so a lot of them will of the uh, home and consumer routers and wireless access points will have much smaller ones all right so let's just so there's no LED indicator in the back here but uh, you do have for data in the front so yeah all right so I'm going to start opening this up So I've never opened one of these before, but should be just the uh, motherboard and probably uh, a wireless card uh, that's uh, attached into the main board. That's how it's done with the uh, with these smaller ones. So 
So I'm always using a magnetic tip screwdriver. Now it doesn't hurt electronics or anything, so some people might be cautious to use uh, magnetic tip screwdrivers with electronics, but there's nothing wrong with uh, doing so. Just don't put the, um, the tip anywhere where there's actual data that can be lost if it if there's a some kind of magnetic field so I don't think we have this problem with this type of hardware So the good thing about this screwdriver is that uh, once you loosen things up, you can easily spin it with your with your fingers. So that's why uh, it's not perfectly round here. It's it has more of a hexagon type of uh, shape to it, which makes it easy to spin around and doesn't slip. see if this uh, is all that's needed or if there's actually uh, okay there's a few more screws in the back let's see if uh, those are holding it in place That's the last one. All right. There we go. And All right, so the uh, whole thing comes off. And now the inside. So just like I thought, there's a, a main board and a wireless card. So the, these are the... Uh, the same wireless cards that you can find in uh, certain notebooks, well, at least old notebooks, the new notebooks, uh, they're a lot smaller. But um, there you go, there's uh, three spots for the antennas. So they all go to an antenna. This one's wrapped all the way around to this side. But, you know, and let's turn it over this way so you can see the. Uh, this is where the LED indicators are. Now I'm not going to further unscrew anything because uh, there's really nothing else to see in the bottom of this. So I just, uh, here we go, let's take a closer look. I'm just going to pop out the wireless cord and see what uh, what kind of wireless card it is? Well, I don't see any, uh, any real indication who the manufacturer is but it does say APCB M394 V dash O dash 0 
All right, so, so one thing I'm gonna, I've decided to do is change the uh, format of these uh, videos. So I'm going to do pretty much the, uh, the raw versions like you see me doing now. And then I'm going to edit them down so they're a lot shorter because uh, a lot of them end up uh, taking an extremely long time. So this just came out of place. Here we go. So this way... Hmm. Okay, let's try this again. So this is normally just snaps in, but in, in this case... Things are not snapping back. There we go. Come on. That's weird. So this is catching now. And it's not fully going back in. Wonder why. There we go. So it looks like it was catching the uh going fully in but I think it's fine there we go yeah I was catching the uh, the bottom part of the uh, circuit board for some reason okay all right so this goes, this goes back like this and it just slides forward Put everything back in the uh, reverse way. Now with the uh, electronic stuff, I usually don't tighten the screws all that much. So for things like this, as whatever I can tighten with my uh, fingers, that's it. Because if you tighten them too much, you're going to break the threads or it's going to get stuck in there and you're going to have a hard time taking it out. So just tighten with your fingers is a good indication that, you know, that's the proper strength that you should use to uh, tighten things. So I see a lot of people always trying to tighten things as hard as they can. And usually for electronics, that's, that's not the proper way of doing things. So everything I'm doing, it's just with my fingers and that way you don't damage the uh, the threads on the screw and the actual screw itself so you won't have difficulty uh, opening it up in the future sometimes if a screw doesn't catch try putting it in a different hole it just a it's a lot easier sometimes to do it that way than try to force it in. So, So if you have a good screwdriver, you, sometimes you can get so used to it that you can actually spin things and tighten and untighten things really quick. But if you use different screwdrivers all the time, 
then you don't gain the same kind of of skill. It just seems that every screwdriver you kind of have to adapt to. So my uh, preference is always to use one screwdriver and uh, get really good at it. Now, I don't look all that great now because I'm getting old, but when I was younger, I used to be able to open things in a lot faster. So yeah, age, there we go. And uh, these just screw back on like this. Again, with these, just um, use your thumbs, use your thumb and, and finger to tighten. No screwdrivers or pliers or wrenches or anything like that. All right, and that's that's it.